Hey guys, welcome to Pest Preps with Troy. I'm Troy. In this series, I'm going to talk to you about general pest control, uh, basically different types of bugs, the household preps for them, and then what to kind of look for in a pest control company when dealing with that specific issue. Uh, this first episode is going to be about German roaches. Uh, a little bit of information about German roaches. They uh, are a nocturnal pest. So if you are seeing and having any issues with them during the day, you might have a bigger issue than you think. Uh, when a problem does get so bad, uh, they do have a distinct pungent odor. So between that odor and daytime sightings, you might really have a, a bigger problem in your wall, voids, uh, cracks and crevices than you actually know. Uh, German roaches at a full maturity do range from about an inch and a half, or a half inch to five eighths of an inch, which is 13 millimeters to 16 millimeters, uh, and they have five stages uh, between egg, the three adolescent stages, and then full maturity. Um, roaches are one of those insects that can cause health issues. Uh, not in every situation, but in most situations that are severe. There is the potential for uh, parasites, fungus, uh, bacterias, and even allergic reactions. Uh, the most common allergic reactions will be the dermal skin reaction from contact with the bug or breathing and respiratory issues. Uh, not 100% sure the information about the parasites, but I do know that... Uh, it's a hemoth worm or something like that, or a hemoth worm. Uh, I don't have any information on that particular parasite. Uh, don't really know anything about the funguses that they can carry, but walking in any moldy, mildewy, fungusy buildup, of course, can spread that anywhere in the house. Uh, the German roach is one of the most invasive household pests it can build up numbers very quickly if the problem is left unaddressed or if the problems and issues get out of hand uh, so mitigating the problems and issues out of the house as fast as possible uh, is what is wanted in proper roach treatment uh, getting into some of the household preps needed uh, you might hear a couple redundancies and repetitivenesses throughout the season or series and throughout the episode uh, but it's because I come into situations time and time again where my preparations that I ask for to be done aren't done or they're not done to the specifications that I really need to get the job done properly uh, so I'm gonna kinda iterate and reiterate and go over the household preparations that I personally like to have done when I show up to a house. Uh, so you, you'll probably want to talk to a pest control company or somebody prior to actually prepping the house uh, 100% because you'll want to know exactly what your technician, what your company is going to want. Uh, so I, I would talk to them first, uh, go through a few companies, talk to three, four, five different companies, see what they want, what their prices are, kind of what their plans are, things that they can do for you, make sure it's a company they can get you taken care of. Uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit here. Uh, in preparations, we'll start with the kitchen. The kitchen is going to be the most common area that you're going to have any problems or issues or notice anything going on uh, because everything that the roach needs to sustain life is going to be in that kitchen. Uh, so cleaning the kitchen and making sure that everything gets picked up, cleaned up in there is definitely key. Uh, cleaning and sanitization is key in solving and treating roach issues. Uh, so that's that's going to be one of the redundancies. You're going to hear cleaning and prepping for cleaning and sanitization come out of my mouth over and over and over because uh, I can't stress it enough. Uh, but uh, pull everything out of the cupboards. Uh, Pull everything out of the drawers on top of the cupboards, microwave cabinets, the oven drawer if you got it. Uh, make sure that all that stuff is cleaned out. Uh, clean it out with soap, water, uh, cleaning supplies, anything to sanitize the surface. 
the roaches have been walking in their excrement, and then they walk on your stuff, on your cans, on your box goods, uh, on your dishes, on your silverware. So you're going to want to make sure that stuff is cleaned up and thoroughly sanitized so that you don't get any of those health risks if they are in your house. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that while you have that stuff out, box up any of the open boxes, containers, uh, macaroni bags, Tupperware them up, seal them up, make sure that the bugs can't get into them. That is your food source, not theirs. So limit their access so they have no food source outside of the synthetic food source that your pest control technician might be using to combat the situation. Uh, no pun intended on the combat jail bait system that you can buy over the counter. Uh, but back to the cleaning and preps, uh, wipe the counters off. Make sure that they're sanitized so that you can actually use them and not worry about what your bugs have been walking around, what problems and issues they might be carrying on them. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that the floor is cleaned. Your technician is going to spend a lot of time bent down on the floor, up underneath the sink, uh, so he don't want to stick to the floor. He wants his chemical to, but he wants that mess cleaned up. He doesn't want to have to worry about having to uh, control food sources because you didn't clean under this item or that item. So clean it up. Uh, declutter the different rooms of the house. Uh, make sure that there's not things stacked up on top of the refrigerator, uh, on top of the microwave. Make sure that there is access to bait, to spray, to powder, the cracks and crevices and the areas that need to have the chemical. Uh, and make sure that it's a clean base for the chemical to sit on so that the bugs have the chemical to get into instead of the chemical soaking into something not getting to the source of the insects. Um, usually preparations in the kitchen don't go past uh, cleaning and removing the items out of the cupboards and cabinets so that they can be addressed. Uh, so we'll move on to the bathroom. The bathroom is going to be the second most prevalent room in the house where roaches could be uh, because of the solid moisture source, because of a uh, solid food source, uh, because they've got plenty of uh, areas to hide. Uh, humidity level is great inside the bathroom for roaches. Uh, a lot of people don't know that roaches can actually feed off of makeups, uh, toilet paper, uh, glues from feminine hygiene products or from different uh, hair products, personal hygiene products. So to make sure that those items are cleaned up for sanitization reasons, of course, uh, is key. And also because if that stuff is out, a technician can't treat those areas and has to skip that room. Uh, if he has to skip that room, he can't get the chemical out and get it treated. The bugs are going to be there. Uh, and also your technician doesn't want to lean down in your piss all over the floor of your bathroom because he's got to get behind the toilet and you didn't clean up the floor. So most likely he or she's going to skip that. I know I've done it time and time again because I don't want to lean down in somebody else's urine and treat their roaches. I just skip it getting into the living room and bedroom areas uh, you're gonna wanna declutter them make sure that there's not stuff build up in areas that they can go harbor in go hide in and that they're not gonna go uh, basically go to instead of getting into my chemicals uh, clean the pizza boxes up from behind the couch the beer cans soda cans get that stuff off the table throw it away get it out uh, it creates odors that are disgusting and gross uh, that make your bug guy want to puke more than he wants to be in your house actually solving your problems and issues. Uh, so declutter things that are built up on end tables, bookshelves, nightstands. Uh, get that stuff out. If it's been sitting there since President Bush was in office, it's time to go. Uh, time and time again, my customers will go, well, I've had this stuff stacked up here in the corner nice and neatly, but I can't seem to get rid of my roaches. Well, why can't I? It's because they're in that stack of crap. Get that crap out, 
You don't need it. We made it through a whole two terms of another president. You went through the whole Obama era, and that stuff is still in the corner of your house. It's still on the table. It's still in the cupboards. It doesn't need to be there. You haven't touched it, seen it, used it. Get rid of it. Once things are starting to come together, preparations, you'll know where these bugs are at. You can pinpoint them. Uh, you can make sure that your, your technician knows what areas of the house that you've been seeing them. And then last but not least, preparation-wise, do not forget about the laundry room. The laundry room usually is stacked up with dirty clothes all over the floor, not in a hamper. Where do you think the bugs are hiding? And like I said earlier, the bugs piss and shit right where they walk. So where they're walking, on and in your clothes, that's where they're defecating. And then not only do you have to worry about that, you have to smell like that. So anybody that knows what that issue smells like or knows what a roach smells like knows that you have roaches now. And it's unsanitary, it's unhealthy to be walking around in clothes that is laden in roach pee and poo. Get it washed, get it cleaned up, get it folded, uh, at least stacked up nice and neatly if you don't have dressers or closets or any space to put it in. So that way you can keep bugs and issues out and away from it. You don't want them walking around, living inside of your clothes. If I come in to treat the house and that stuff's laying around, I can't treat. That's another area those bugs are going to go hide. So if you get that stuff cleaned up, that's another area that chemical can be put out to make sure the bugs don't go. And then it also will cut down on the smells in your house. It will cut down on the fact that you You've got options of clothing to wear now because it's not all dirty. Uh, the bugs are going to get into the chemical and, and the, it's going to go that much smoother for you and for your technician. Uh, usually, uh, once all that's done and you've done everything on the list that your technician needs and wants, you're going to want to make sure that uh, it's a company that's going to do what you want and that's going to actually get in, get your issue solved, and get you taken care of. So what I recommend is, of course, to shop locally. Uh, if you shop locally, you're going to find a technician, a company that is in your neighborhood, in your community. They're going to care more about your community and your neighborhood because they probably live just down the street. Uh, myself, I've been in several of the homes on the very block that I live in, uh, because I live right above my office, uh, customers on the block, they know that I'm here, they like that I'm here, and if they have any problems or issues, they can come talk to me. Uh, and then we can get a plan going, get them taken care of. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure you find a company that's going to do that for you. Uh, you're also going to want to ask the company questions like what types of chemicals, chemicals they use. Are they using a repellent chemical that's going to get the bugs excited and moving around? Are they using a non-repellent chemical that is going to kind of just wait for the bugs to do what they do and come out slowly and work that way? Are they using a, a powder to flush them out of the cracks and crevices? Are they using just a baiting system where they go in and they squirt gel bait all over the kitchens and bathrooms and in the, the living room stuff? just to make sure that they've got a secondary synthetic food source with a chemical in it. Uh, so you're going to want to know all that stuff. You're also going to want to know precautions to use with the chemical. Uh, what is my dry time? What, what do I have to do with my kids, with my pets, uh, fish tanks, things like that? Uh, it really depends on the types of chemicals and the actual treatment being done. Some are safer to have... Uh, to be in use, I guess, when kids and pets are in a certain situation. There are others where you might need to leave for a few hours. Uh, so it really depends on the products that they're using, the system that they're using, and kind of how they're going to treat your house and your situation. So feel free to ask your technician, ask the company any question. And at the same time, from a technician standpoint, the more questions that you're asking 
to better your situation and your service lets a technician know that you really do truly care about solving the problem at your house. Uh, so that makes them that much more willing to get in there and, and get something done and, and get a plan for you at least uh, so that your problems and issues can be mitigated, eradicated, and then excluded. Uh, so do, do your homework. Make sure that you get a company that's going to fit your needs. Uh, there are many companies out there. I can't vouch for all of them, uh, but there are places like the Better Business Bureau. That's their job is to vouch for places like that or Angie's List or, or something like that to, uh, to know kind of what you're getting into, who you're getting, uh, and let them actually show you the work that they can do. Uh, last but not least, you know, once you've kind of met with your technician, solved this problem, and you know that these problems and issues are gone, you're going to want to uh, reach out to the technician, reach out to the company, and let them know how much you appreciate the work that they put in. Uh, because not only have you just worked your ass off preparing your house, getting all this ready, and doing all this work yourself, but your technician has as well. And even though it may not have looked like he did a lot of physical work at the house, uh, there was a lot of mental game running through his or her head, trying to make sure that they're accessing all the areas they're going to be, that they're thinking of all the places they could, would, and should be. Uh, are they eliminating all the food sources? Are you eliminating food sources? And is the treatments just going the way that they need to? And is that technician getting the problem solved? So let them know how they're doing. Let them know that you appreciate the work they did because a, a technician is running on morale. Uh, there's times where we get burnt out, where we, we show up week after week after week after month after month and these people's problem isn't being solved, but it's because they're not doing the things that we need to get that problem solved. But doing that kind of gets us burnt out. So when we show up and somebody has prepared, that is, that's the first thing you can do to let your technician know that you appreciate the work they're doing is actually listening to what they're telling you and then doing it. And then your technician, he feels, he or she feels better to actually get the job done and to be there. They're more personable, they're more relatable, and uh, it just works that much better for everybody involved. Uh, and then also at the same time, it's communication between you, the company, the technician, uh, maybe even a landlord or a homeowner situation. So everybody involved gets taken care of, everybody involved should be happy. Uh, and if everything goes the way it should, nine times out of ten, all parties involved are going to be happy. Uh, but really, there's there's not much else I can do for this episode. Uh, we'll kind of just leave it here. If you've got any comments, questions, concerns, drop them in the comments below. Uh, if you've got any tips or tricks or just ideas for how I can make these episodes and this series better, uh, the information that I can get curtailed and get out to you, I guess, uh, let me know. Uh, constructive criticism is key, I guess, for myself so that I, I can give you the information you need and point you in the direction you need to go. Uh, so just let me know. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, so just tell me how things are going, how it looks, how you feel, and we'll see you next time. Uh, I believe that within the next couple of days we'll get episode two out. It's going to be geared towards bed bugs. Uh, I know a lot of people right now might be dealing with or have dealt with a bed bug issue. So you might have uh, a little more vested interest in this one or in the next episode than this one. So uh, keep your eyes out. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Have a good night, guys.